What's going on guys? Welcome to another, oh, that's not good. Okay. What's going on guys? Welcome to another video. So today in this video, we're gonna be replacing the fuel filter, the fuel pump sock, and the fuel pressure regulator. So we've ordered everything here. There's a uh, parts list in the description, which you can just scroll down to and see. Um, so the reason why we need to do all this is because the fuel filter in the car right now, which is located right there, um, has 160,000 kilometers on it. Okay, so it's never been changed. And uh, we're gonna be running six port auxiliary fuel injection once we start turning the boost up. So we wanna make sure that the fuel filter has the least amount of restriction as possible so we can get as much fuel to the high pressure fuel system as well as the auxiliary fuel injectors as possible. So since we've purchased another regulator from Mazda, we have one in the tank obviously. Um, and basically how this works is with these direct injection systems, they are returnless systems. So they don't have a regulator under the hood that returns fuel back to the tank. All the fuel pressure is generated inside the tank and regulated inside the tank by this regulator. So there's a spring inside this thing right here, okay? And usually you'll see about 60 PSI of fuel pressure on the low side fuel system because of the spring that regulates to 60 PSI. Now, in order to increase fuel pressure, most guys running port injection uh, will run a regulator under the hood and then run a return line. In our case, to save a little bit of money, we're gonna give crushing this regulator a try. We're gonna crush it in a vise to put more preload on the spring inside here and try to attain 70 or more PSI fuel pressure. Right now, we're getting 60 PSI fuel pressure when, they tur when we turn the ignition on, um, but we wanna have 70 or higher. We don't wanna go too high either though because we don't wanna burst any lines and stuff like that, but um, the reason why we wanna increase the fuel pressure is because with any sort of port injection system, whether it be sixth port, four port injection, the fuel injectors are exposed to boost pressure, okay? And what happens is when those injectors open up, the boost pressure is gonna try to push the fuel back into the injector because there's a pressure differential, right? So if you've got right now, like we have 60 PSI fuel pressure going to our six port injectors, what happens is if I'm running, let's say 35 PSI boost, 60 PSI fuel pressure subtract 35 PSI boost only equals 20 PSI fuel pressure. So when you have low fuel pressure, you're gonna have less fuel being delivered and you're also gonna have atomization issues because if the fuel pressure is too low, the fuel is not gonna atomize as effectively and mix into the surrounding air as effectively as if you were to have, let's say 40 plus PSI fuel pressure. So in my case right now, in the short term, I don't really plan on running more than 30 pounds of boost right now um, because first of all, I got a three bar Bosch map sensor, which is only good for about 29 to 30 pounds of boost based on what I read. But if I want to go higher, I might have to upgrade to a 3.5 bar or a four bar map sensor. Um, but it depends because I think I can have a lot of fun with 30 pounds of boost to be honest. But right now with 60 PSI fuel pressure regulated from the tank because of this, uh, 60 PSI fuel pressure subtract 30 PSI boost. I only have 30 PSI fuel pressure, right? So I want to have good atomization because of the fact that it's six port, um, it's injecting before the throttle body and it relies on the intake manifold to disperse all that fuel to each cylinder. Now, if there's really poor atomization, it's not gonna disperse as effectively. So the better the atomization by running higher fuel pressure, the more evenly that fuel is gonna get dispersed into each cylinder and the better and more effective our burn is going to be. So let's get started by uh, taking the rear uh, uh, seat out and uh, we'll, we'll show you guys what to do. So anytime we're working on a fuel system or an electrical system, we should disconnect the battery because we don't want to cause any fires and stuff like that and it's always safe that we, when you don't have sparks and stuff, you know? So we're gonna disconnect the battery and then we're gonna start working on the fuel system. We're going to be giving you guys a full in-depth review of the complete setup on the car because um, there's a lot of details and a lot of information that we can share. So uh, we're gonna give you guys a full rundown on the setup and uh, that'll be in a future video though. You take the Cork Sport battery box cover off. Um, I'm one of the people who thinks gas smells amazing, but it's not good for you. So to prevent getting high on gas fumes, we've opened all the doors. Here's our split second controller. Again, we'll go into detail in another video about the entire setup, yep. but anyways. But uh, it splits seconds and then it controls them. So that's, that's all it does. Time is of the essence. Battery's disconnected. All right, we're safe. There we go, yeah. Now, the other thing you wanna do is uh, ensure that your flux capacitor is also disconnected, and that's in the back of, oh wait, this isn't a DeLorean. Okay, so back seat. All right, 
We're gonna take this guy out. To remove these seats, very simple. It's just a clip on this side and a, and a tab on this side, tabs on each side. And all you do is you pull up. You get a grab of it and you just pull straight up. Just like that. It's a dirty seat, man. Go to the other side. You keep tools in here, don't you? Just pull up, right? Slide the belts out, or the buckles rather, and just move this to a safe location. All right, and now when you take your seat out, uh, you're gonna see that, but it's gonna be less mangled. And the reason that's mangled is because we mangled it. You can check our six product auxiliary fuel injection video and you'll see that we cut this all up. Uh, this access hole here, in my opinion, is for diagnostic purposes only. It's for a technician or a mechanic to be able to check for power and ground at the connector, but to actually replace the fuel pump, Mazda most likely intends that you lower the gas tank. In our case, working out of a homestead garage, we didn't really feel like lowering the gas tank, although, a lot of people have told me that it's actually quite easy to lower the gas tank on these things. Um, but, you know, this was a while ago for us, so we're still going to go through and do it this Plus, way. We're working on the floor here. We don't have a hoist, so it's a bit more difficult to drop a tank with jack stands. Yeah. But we have a fire extinguisher there. Yeah. So four Phillips screws here. Going to go ahead and remove that. Take this cover off. If this actually works, dude, if it, if it actually, like, raises fuel pressure, I won't have to waste money. Don't people do this, though, already? Doesn't it work? There's not a lot of info on it, though. Yeah. That's the thing. Not a lot of people talk about crushing the in-tank regulator. So we're right? just going to be guinea pigs here. Most, most tuners and most guys doing this stuff, they're running port injection and they're running a regulator off the fuel rail. And then they're running a return line back to the tank. Um, I don't know of any, but on the old forum, mazdaspeedforums.org, there was a guy, can't remember who it was, who actually made a thread on doing this, right? And he was able to achieve 80 PSI by crushing the in-tank regulator. We're gonna give it a try. Unfortunately, that form is no longer available with us. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna disconnect the connector here. Okay. I'm gonna take these tabs out with a trim tool. These little things. Now, if you didn't already cut that, that metal in that area. Ah. Uh. Uh. So this metal, we already cut it, so we're just gonna bend it back upward. Yeah. Gently, um, we want to just make sure not to give yourself tetanus. <laughs> so okay. the tabs are out. Just lift them up with this, and uh, we're gonna get some pliers. Just bend these back. It's very thin metal, actually. We're gonna bend this back, and basically our plan is to hopefully not have to run a return. So essentially, guys, if you guys have seen our um, the video where my engine blew up on the dyno last year in August of 2016, sorry, <laughs> August 2019, August 16th, 2019. I remember the exact day. Um, that was a pivotal moment in my life. But um, in that video, uh, I was actually running six port with 60 PSI coming from the tank. And uh, peak was about 24 to 25 pounds of boost. So if you calculate 60 PSI of fuel pressure, subtract 25, you still have 35 PSI of fuel pressure, right? Which wasn't really an issue. But um, like it'll make power if you keep the regulator at 60 PSI. It'll it'll make power, but if you want to make it efficiently and you want to and you want to do it right, get that fuel pressure a little higher, which is why guys run regulators and returns and stuff. But I'm gonna try this. Okay, let's give it a shot. So let me get some pliers and we'll bend this back. Time to do a little experiment with my tweezers. Nice and easy. Ooh. Crunchy. You just gotta get it open just enough. Don't wanna. Oh yeah, look at that. There's a little more here. Okay, make some room here. Yeah. Yeah. Be gentle. Yeah, this is obviously a butcher way to do it. But you know what? It saves time. Quite literally. Not literally. having to drop the tank is Yeah, it doesn't take super long to drop the tank, but it's this this like look at that. How long did that take me? You know what I mean? Plus it's covered up anyways. Just make sure you don't completely butcher it so that you can fold it back at least somewhat nicely. Yeah. And it's and, covered uh, by the seat. We also take no responsibility for uh, any yeah. mistakes because you know. That's what the disclaimer's for at the beginning of the video. We're just showing you what we're doing. Yeah. We're not telling you to do it. Yeah, just you know, do whatever you want, right? Just Make sure you uh, hit the subscribe button and notification bell and uh, check us out on uh, Instagram. <laughs> um, what are we doing now? Okay, so we gotta disconnect this line, this, this fuel line. There's gonna be a little bit of residual pressure, especially if the car's been running recently. So get some uh, rags and stuff handy and get some uh, safety glasses 
and uh, let me go do that. Pass me the extinguisher because it's going to be useless if there's fire inside and we can't okay. get it. That's an old one. That's an old extinguisher. We got to buy a new one. Get a little bit of rag in here. A little bit of pressure on this this, this white tab. It helps if you push the line in a little bit, then push the thing down. I gotta be careful not to cut myself either. Oh, a little bit of fuel came out. Yep, we're good. No big deal. Okay, just soak it up with the rag. There's obviously an O-ring in there. Make sure you don't damage the O-ring when you're installing it and stuff. Right around here is a little clip, and there's like a, almost like a ring gear going around this. And what happens is, as you tighten this, it ratchets and locks to not loosen itself while driving. You can just bend them out of the way a little bit. So you have to bend those out of the way on each side. Unscrewing this lid. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just going to be fighting the clip, and you won't be unscrewing anything. Yeah, because the plastic's kind of malleable. You're 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 blah, 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 blah. the plastic's kind of malleable, so you're able to bend it out of the way and then just unscrew the cap. Just keep in mind that there's a clip there and a clip there, and they will fight you if you don't unclip them. Yeah. You can see right there the teeth that they ratchet on. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get two pry bars. I'm going to start with one and see if I can do it myself. Yeah. Worst case. We'll uh, put the camera down and, and Julian will... If you want to see this in action, we actually have uh, filmed footage of us both hammering and unscrewing this in our sixth port video. So let's see if I can do this. Just me. Without breaking it. Yeah, see it's spinning? Obviously there's special tools for everything, but... Keep the probar flat against the tab. Make sure you're not going to slip. On this one now. Now there is a, there's two springs on the side, inside, so it might spring up once it's loose. Oh yeah, move the line out of the way, get the ring out. Okay, so there is a fuel level sensor that we have to watch out for. You just caught on the fuel the fuel line. Oh. Okay, a little bit of a spillage there. Yeah, ideally you want the tank to be empty. Go like this slightly while the fuel sensor's still in there. Let it dump back into the tank a little bit. While I do that, I'll pull it out. Yeah, that float is kind of big and it gets caught up on that uh, rim. Yeah. 94 octane, baby. Yeah, it's gonna be a little bit of a mess, but I really don't care. This is all in the name of boost. Okay, there it is. There it is. Now what we're gonna do is, maybe I can dump some more in here. Let's see. Uh-oh, that's expensive. Expensive liquid right there. Yeah. Okay, let's bring it over here. So you'll notice, this bottom basket, we did not buy that. We only bought this section in here, this section, and this section. Yeah, we're gonna clean it very thoroughly before we put this back together. So if you've ever wondered how fuel level sensors work, this float here, is less dense than the fuel it's in, so it, it wants to float. And as it comes up, you can see over here, that is essentially a slide potentiometer. So you have a wiper, and you have a resistance between the top and the bottom. And as the wiper moves up, that resistance changes. And you read that with these two lines here. And that's your fuel level. Boost. It looks like a pool, eh? Like you wanna go swimming in there. Is there a rust in the bottom of the tank there? No, it's, it's a plastic tank. Oh. We're gonna be mixing some methanol in there soon enough. Right now this is just 94, but once we start turning things up, we need that octane, right? We've got a good view here of what we got going on. We're gonna take the basket apart. These solder joints here are because the stock connector doesn't actually plug directly in to the Aeromotive Stealth 325 liter per hour pump that we have in here. So we actually had to solder our own wires in. No big deal, very easy to do. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this thing apart. I'm gonna take a picture of it with my phone so I remember exactly how everything goes. It's always good to take pictures, it never hurts. Okay, take a picture, it lasts longer. Okay, I'm gonna disconnect these connectors. Okay, it's very simple. This is a very simple setup. On the bottom side, there's a little C-clip. So, oh shit. Okay, we got a lot of fuel that just dumped out. No big deal. Let me just... On the grass. <laughs> mm. 
Okay. You can actually pour it on the grass. It's all good. I don't know where I poured it. I gotta figure out where to pour it. On this driveway. No. Back in the tank? Back in the tank. That's the safest place for it. Back to where we were now. This spring here, there's a C-clip on the bottom. We're gonna pop the C-clip out. Okay, just get a little screwdriver in there. Is that gonna fling off into my eye? I'm gonna hold it. There we go. Because the spring puts some tension on it. So, okay, that lifts right up like that. All right, just kind of pops off. We're gonna get a little screwdriver and very gently, so we don't break anything, just lift this up like that. Right. Lift this up like that. You wanna do sudden violent jolts to unclip it. No, you do not. See the fuel sock? Oh, nice and dirty. We're replacing that. They always get dirty so quick. I don't know why. There's our fuel pressure regulator right there. See that? Yeah. So, see this line here? It goes here, it wraps around here, and it goes down here. So what that regulator is doing is... Bleeding it. Bleeding it. Back to the it's inlet. basically like a, a, a hole made in, on purpose to kind of bleed off pressure. Yeah. And that hole is there. made based on spring pressure. So if you change the spring rate of that spring, you're going to change how much fuel gets bled off. And that's directly going to affect how much pressure you have on the actual fuel line. So right now, I've, I've removed this line from the top side of the basket here. It just clips in. And now I'm, I'm taking these tabs off so I can separate this line. Okay, so there's our basket and our fuel level sensor, which we're going to be reusing for sure. This is the new stock right here. Is this OEM? Why does this one look so much more restrictive than this one? This is a different material. This looks like it flows better though. Why did they change the material? Probably found a cheap, you probably found a cheaper way to make them. Maybe I should just reuse this then. <laughs> no, look at how dirty that is. Yeah, but is that dirty? Unless, or was, or was that like black? Was the filter actually like black particles in there? I don't think there's any particles in there. So we don't know enough about fuel socks, but I would say put the new one on. Okay, we'll put the new one on even though it looks like a different material. See how well you can hyperventilate through each of them? and then time when you pass out to see which one's more permeable. Is light gonna really tell you anything? It goes through, look. Yeah, light goes through, but this looks, what about fluid? This looks like way more restrictive than... How can it look more restrict? Okay, fine, fine, we'll put the new one what in. What kind of science is this? <laughs> I guess we'll put the new one in. Are you sure? Okay, fine. But this is cheaper. Anyways. This is cheaper? Is it really cheaper? I don't know. I don't know. All I know is one is new and one's not. Boom. There you go. All right, there's some flexibility to this plastic. There is some flexibility to that plastic. Okay, that popped off. Can you see clearly? I can see clearly. Now the fuel pumps out. Fuel pumps out. That's a good song, man. Yeah? I can see clearly. It takes me back. The fuel pumps like reverse out. on the car. It's uh, gonna be a high, 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 <sighs> high gas trend. Why am I so tired? Is it the vapor? Probably not. You're gonna stab yourself. I keep seeing that screwdriver just slipping water towards your hand. I'm just gonna hear a yelp. Come on, baby. Get off. All right, so now that we've cleaned off all the red, we can continue on with what we're doing. Ooh. Oh, that was a close one. I don't feel like it's gonna hurt. That's gonna hurt a lot. I just want you to come off. There. You got it. Okay, so one more on the regulator. Side. And now, are you gonna crush the new regulator or See, experiment the with the old one? I'm gonna experiment with the old one. And then if you screw it up, you can put the new one in. Exactly. Awesome, that's a great idea. Now, do you know how much to crush it? I have no idea. Okay, that's another problem. This is very easy, guys. You just have to get in there and try it. Something like that. Make sure you remember how everything goes. Yeah, it goes like that, no big deal. Okay. Now the pump can come out. I don't think he realizes that we're filming this, so if he does forget, we can just go back to the footage, but I don't think he's making that connection yet. See, this pump, now that we have everything at the bottom, you just push the pump through. Right? Like that. Oh, more fuel coming up. I gotta tell you though, man, you're, you're, really, you're really diving deep into this. Look at that. Look at that. More gas. Man, this gets messy. Yeah, you know what? Actually, like, it smells a lot like gas. Maybe we should light some scented candles and put them around here just to kind of like get a different scent going on. Just light some scented candles right beside here. That's a good idea. Right? Then we can like smell no, like do cherry that. blossom and pomegranate. We're going to start a fire, Joanne. Uh, we're, uh... So look, fuel pump comes out. There's this little spacer here and then there's an O-ring. Okay. 
you could probably reuse that. It's not a big deal. See the hole on the right side there? Yeah. That mates up with this O-ring. So you gotta make sure. Sense. Gotta make sure it goes in the same way, right? Perfect. You pull this regulator off now. Just get a little screwdriver in there. Lightly go around. Pry it out. We're gonna try experimenting with this regulator because we know that this regulator generates about 60 psi, and we wanted to get it to 70 or higher. So we're gonna we're gonna play with it. So it's like this, right? Yep. That's how it came out. All right, that's the old one, right. and that's the new one. Just now in how, case. How do people crush these things? That is a good question. Since that thread is no longer on the Mazda Speed forums, we're gonna have to play. So we're gonna have to look at it. We're gonna, we know how it goes together. So we're gonna take it apart, strip it down, get all these little things off. I'm gonna have to take this seal off. It's a little lower ring right here at the bottom. So I don't wanna damage it. Just take it off like that. There's a ring here, a little tiny little half ring. Take that off. I'm gonna take this off. This is the regulator in its bare form, right? And there's a little spring in there which regulates the 60. So I think this is how it works, man. Fuel comes in through here, okay? Yeah. The fuel is then forced through these holes, right? It's forced through these outer holes here, which then pushes on the spring and the diaphragm, which lifts the spring and lifts the diaphragm off its seat, allowing fuel to be bled through the center hole, which then, as you can see, gets pushed in like this. Right, fuel comes in through here where the fuel filter is. But then what happens is, when the spring goes down, it lifts up the valve, and fuel comes through the center hole here and goes through the center portion here, and then goes out through this line back to the inlet. So what we have to do is we have to. We need to change. We need to crush this thing. The spring rate. Right. If you look at this as a valve, it opens when the spring is depressed a certain amount. So if you change the way the spring depresses, you change the fuel pressure that it bleeds off at. It's like a wastegate. It's pretty much a fuel wastegate. The spring doesn't actually go all through here. The spring's only from this portion to this portion. See that? So we just have to crush this section a little bit. Okay. So we did a little bit of reading. We couldn't find any information related to Mazda Speed 3 specific stuff, but Guys in other platforms, like you said, Honda. Honda does it. There's Audi guys doing it. There's 8th Gen Civic guys doing it. There's a lot of people crush regulators to get more fuel pressure, but we just can't really find a good tutorial on how to do it. So we're just gonna stumble through here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a socket, a spark plug socket. Instead of putting this thing in a vise like this and just crushing the whole top half, we're thinking of actually taking a seven millimeter socket and just crushing the center slightly. Yeah, it's it's gonna be easier, that. I think, to crush the center rather than crush the whole thing because the spring looks like it's sitting within the center section anyways, not the outer section. Yeah. When we turn the ignition on and we prime the fuel system, the fuel pressure gauge is reading 60 PSI. We wanna see 70 or 75 PSI. Okay, so instead of using that spark plug socket, see how it's too long? We're gonna use a 16 millimeter half inch socket, which might be a little shorter for us, which might give us the ability to fit this seven millimeter deep socket in, hopefully. Yeah, see, I'm gonna go nice and easy. Keep an eye on it. It's going in. It went in a bit. Yeah. A little bit. How far do you go though? I think, I think we have to test now, don't we? You can't uncompress it, so maybe test it now. We noticed that uh, this seven millimeter fits right in here, but it kind of went crooked a little bit. So I feel like we're gonna spin it around this way and go at the big end and get it more centered, I guess. Let's give it a shot. Hopefully this works. Just to give it a little bit more. Hang on, let me make sure this is 100% straight. You wanna make sure it's straight. Okay, just gonna go a little bit centered out. See, it's going in. Ooh, okay. That's a lot of crush. Okay, we'll see what kind of pressure we get. Come on, 100 BSI. <laughs> All right guys, so we got it uh, just assembled back together. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna go ahead and dip it into the tank, hook the line up, hook the connector up, reconnect the battery, turn the ignition on, and see what kind of fuel pressure our fuel gauge reads. Nice and easy. Just dip it right in there. We don't have to put the lid on, because we might have to take it back out. So I'm just gonna get some a little bit of silicone spray so I don't damage the O-ring in here. I wanna make sure everything is good. Okay. I hope I didn't rip anything. Hopefully not. Okay. 
I think we're good. Now I want to put the cap on actually, just slightly. Want to put the cap you on? You can't now anyway, you put the fuel rail back in. You won't put on it. It's, it's fine, it's not gonna, as long as the fuel pump gets stuff in there. I'm gonna reconnect the battery. Oh, you're gonna have to go too crazy, just give it a little bit of a snug. Okay, so our fuel pressure gauge is right here. This is our oil pressure gauge. It's gonna be zero because we're not actually starting the car. When I turn the ignition on, this should hopefully read higher than 60 PSI. It'll probably take a few key cycles to get the pressure built up. Yeah, because there's air in the line now because we've drained it all. I forgot to plug it in, one sec. Okay, plugged in now, ready? Thirty-three. Let's try it again. Sixty-seven. Oh. It went up a little. One more time. Seventy. Oh, shit. Hold on one sec. How high one does second. It go? Let me just turn the AC off. Let me turn all <laughs> this crap off. One second. Oh one man, more time. Let's try it one more time. Seventy. That's kind of right where I want to be too. You know, that's kind of right where I want to be because thirty pounds of boost, uh, sixty. Sub uh, sorry, seventy subtract thirty pounds is forty psi. It's perfect. It's not going higher, right? Seems like it's right where it needs to be. Let me try one more key cycle. I think that's it. Now we just have to transfer everything over to the new bucket you bought. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. First try. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so if you want your fuel regulator crushed, just call uh, Eric. Or just watch this video and try it yourself. So now that we've uh, verified that we've got increased our fuel pressure by approximately 10 PSI, which is pretty sweet, we're going to go ahead and take everything apart, transfer it over to the new filter, the new sock, all that kind of stuff, and uh, we'll take it for a drive, a quick drive, to make sure that, you know, everything is going well. So again, we're on a base map right now. So we're not making crazy power yet. Um, I'd be happy to see 500 horsepower. That'd be all right. You know, but I want it to be safe. I don't want to go crazy with it. Pretty cool how we were able to get this increased pressure just by crushing it slightly. So if this all works out after this drive, we might not even need to run a, a fuel pressure regulator under the hood in a return line. We can just use this. And through software, through the split second controller, we can control the onset of the sixth port fuel injection system as the MAF voltage increases. And we can take that into consideration because, for example, if at, we have it kick on, let's say 18 pounds of boost, and we have 70 PSI fuel pressure, 70 PSI subtract 18 pounds of boost is obviously quite a bit more fuel pressure, right? So you would then reduce the pulse width on the R4 software fuel map. That little fist sized thing is the only thing that's supplying your engine with fuel. That's it. That doesn't yeah. work, nothing works. Exactly. Nothing. Nothing. They're pretty small, the fuel pumps, eh? Nothing. And make sure that that O-ring is still in place. Make sure you don't pinch the O-ring and rip it. So I'm going like this, and I'm just massaging it in. There we go. Oh. Should be fine. Now we can put the new sock on and the regulator. Here's our regulator. Again, I'm gonna put some silicone spray. Rock on with your sock on. Just to try to ease it mm. during installation. Get that silicone spray all up in your high pressure fuel pump into your injector so it can clog. No, it's silicone spray, it'll dilute. Yeah, I know. See that? Right, C-clip time. There we go. You like it when that happens? Can you really get hit with the dead cat? Dead cats feel good. All right, let's plug it in. Plug it all in. Plug it in, plug it in. It's like light break, but it's flammable. Always be careful when you're working with these so you don't, so you don't damage the fuel level sensor. Just plug it in here now. This is the actual power for the pump, which we have to make sure we do not mess up. Look at that. We're ready to turn the boost up, guys, and run some auxiliary fuel. Right now we're on the stock fuel system because we're still on a base map, uh, but we'll still, we'll take it for a spin and you know, make sure everything is good. I've been driving it here and there. I haven't been driving it much because I have a daily driver. Okay. So what we're gonna do is put the pump assembly back in and then we're gonna quickly test for fuel pressure before we fully screw the lid down. Yep. So just hold on to that for a second. 
Let me make sure the seal here and the mating surface is clean. Seal's going on. Flip it. See if I can flip it. Level sensor goes in first. And then before you plug the line in, you put this ring on. I need to make sure that the seal, the O-ring here around the circumference, is properly sitting. It's like all this folded sheet metal. Looking clean, man. That's a clean install. <laughs> it looks like it looks like a bomb went off under the car, but it's clean. It's a clean install. Let's uh, tighten it down now using a pry bar. Do you want to uh, test the regulator first? Yeah. Let's um, plug it all in. Well, I'm sure it'll work because it's the same, right? Okay. Get, get it in there. We're gonna leave this bent open. For the first drive, it's gonna be open. We're not gonna close it. Because we wanna check to make sure that there's no leaks make coming sure out of the rim. Leaks. Yeah, we don't wanna hide any leaks. We wanna make sure that we can get it covered. Make sure this is tightened down. It doesn't have to be super tight, but we don't wanna leak. We don't wanna have any leaks. Here we go. fluctuating around 90 so it's definitely hitting a little bit more because of the regulators a little higher right now it's hitting a little bit more pressure but let's take it for a spin and make sure we're good now now that I have it running and we're hitting more pressure I'm just gonna check underneath the hood again one more time just to make sure we have no leaks before we drive it enabled for flat foot shifting you have to make sure that you're on the gas and off the gas in between to make sure that it doesn't engage Let me try another pull here system the oxygen isn't used up right because the oxygen reacts with the fuel and burns but since the O2 sensor for the um, AEM failsafe is picking up a lean mixture because the oxygen isn't used up it triggers the uh, guardian angel to dump the boost so as soon as I get in the fourth we're only hitting like 10 pounds of boost so what I have to do is I have to put a delay on the um, AEM failsafe trigger and that should resolve the issue as you can see, the fuel pressure has now been raised and uh, it's gonna be a good time once we start running more boosts. So stay tuned for more vids, guys. Hope you liked it. Take care.